FBI employee was among the first responders at the Flight 93 crash site. In the past 10 years, she's never been able to go back there. Now she's sharing her story and one unusual thing she says she saw. Christine Ford reporter Paul Van Osdall. Lily Leonardi spent years working as a street cop, but nothing prepared her for what she saw in that field outside Shanksville 10 years ago. There was stuff hanging out of the trees. There was debris everywhere. It felt like somebody sucked the life right out of me. And then she says she saw something remarkable. The angels started appearing on the perimeter of the, of the crash site. That's right. The FBI official says she saw angels, dozens of them, at the Flight 93 crash site. They were dressed as if they were in a warrior guard, like a Roman centurion. And there were so many of them, you couldn't see their faces. All right, Shalom. This is the Hara One, Ban Yasha Allah of the Lions Den Camp. I want to say, Ka Halayim, La Yahawa, Ba Hashem Yahawa Shai, Ba Hashem Haraka Kodash, Ma'amath. Double honor to the elder apostles of GMS and their elders. And Shalom to you, Akim, and Akwatim, and children that believe in sincerity and truth around the four corners of the earth. Uh, yeah, I want to go into this topic dealing with the angels, man. And um, this lady says she saw some angels um, back during September 11th when that plane landed and crashed in Pennsylvania, I think it was. And it left a big-ass hole in the ground and killed a bunch of people. Um, but around that um, crash site, this lady says she saw a glimpse of the angels, man. Meaning that like, she saw their armor and um, how they, you know, and it was a bunch of them. She kept saying a dozen. So 12, that's a spiritual number. You know, of course, um, I don't know if she an Edomite or confusion of face, you know, Jake. But whatever she is, because, you know, a lot of our people are Irish. They had a red hair and shit, so you never know. But she, um, whatever she saw, you know, she, um, she was a federal agent. And she coming out years, 10 years later talking about it. All right, she tried to make her own assumptions about it, uh, make up her own story about it. But if you go to the scriptures, it tells you, you know. Um, all right, because the scriptures tell you that the angels are always around and everything that's happening in the world and out of the world, the Most High um, gives the order to the angels and they bring it to pass. All right. Um. So I'm going to get this real quick. There was a time in the Bible uh, around the 8th century to where you had Elisha uh, and Elijah around the 8th century B.C. Now, after Elisha was taken up, I mean, Eli uh, so like Elijah was taken up in a chariot uh, to the Most High, to the, into the spirit realm, Elisha asked for um, double of that blessing. And he wound up teaching uh, double the amount of years as Elijah Ann had that power. So this right here, I'm going to show you. It says Second Kings 6 and 15. And when the servant of the man of Yahweh was risen early and gone forth, behold, and an host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? So basically saying, how are we going to fight these people? Right? And he answered, fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them, man. And that's important to know in these times. People that trust in chariots, trust in horses, trust in the military, their technology and Esau and the police and everything that they can see. The Lord telling you, like, the, the, the heavenly host, the army, and the angels are way more than those that be with the wicked. All right, the Lord saying the the Lord is with you, just like King David told um, Goliath. You know, you got that sword, that armor with you, but I got your howl with me. All right, you must have lost your mind. All right, so it says, and Elisha prayed. So I'm gonna read that again. And he said, "Fear not, for they that be with us." are more than they that be with them, right? So you might think you're alone. Um, and when you're out there teaching, going through your life, the angels are always, always around you. 
scriptures tell you your prayers are heard before the, uh, your eye, your angels eyes always do behold the face of the Lord and, and you know when you pray alright um, verse 17 and Elisha prayed and said Yahweh I pray thee open his eyes right and the Lord heard his heard Elisha's prayer from heaven man and answered his uh, prayer so he opened the eyes of the man that he may see and Yahweh opened the eyes of the young man right same way the most high must have opened that ladies uh the FBI agents eyes to see the angels all right and she said it was smoky and misty and there was a lot of death around and um that's not going to happen unless the most high commissioned it and sent the angels to bring it to pass all right so it's an Elisha prayed and said, Yahweh, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And Yahweh opened the eyes of the young man. And he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about. It's crazy, right? So it was, it was the, round about the mountain, around them, it was probably dozens or thousands of chariots all around them ready to protect <laughs> all right so the lord was basically um protecting uh the israelites that was in samaria and uh down in near samaria and also um uh, protecting us from the king of uh, syria which is dumb damn um aramaeans all right so the Lord opened the eyes of Elisha's men to see the angels that surround them. And the angels are always around. Just like Antiochus Epiphanes IV, um, on his way back, I think it was from Egypt, a voyage into Egypt, right? I think this was around 169 or 168 BC before he uh, turned around and ransacked Jerusalem. All right? It says, about the second Maccabees five and one, right? And on, on his voyage to Egypt, the Lord showed him angels. Basically saying the heavens are warring against you, Antiochus. You're not going to win this battle. And he was seeing them in the sky. And he, don't, and he was taking it as an apparition. But the Lord was showing him like the angels are around and we're warring against you. Every step he made, it was a step closer to his own demise. Second Maccabees five and one. About the same time, Antiochus prepared his second voyage into Egypt, and it happened that through all the city, for the space almost of forty days, so it's about forty days, or like a month and ten days, there were seen horsemen running in the air. So off and on, probably he was seeing this. He was seeing the chariots running, just busy. <laughs> And, and it says running in the air, right? Just like the lady saw, she saw the uh, the angels. She didn't see the, excuse me, the chariots. <clears throat> she supposedly saw the angels. It said they, um, there were seen horsemen, right? Because when you hear about Elijah getting taken up in a chariot like a horse, what it means is the horse and the horsemen. Right? The horse means the power, the horse that's, that you ride upon. But then you have horsemen which ride the horse, right? That's why scriptures speak of the chariot and say, I saw a man's hand inside the chariot, you know? It says, uh, there were seen horsemen running in the air in, clothed, in cloth of gold and armed with lances like a band of soldiers. Just like the lady saw. She said she saw them in gold, um, Looking like soldiers, looking like Roman centurions. Shit deep, man. All right. It says, and troops of horsemen in array encountering and running one against another. And that's what the scriptures say uh, the chariots, they would kiss, meaning pass through each other, or go near each other, same way a, a, an airplane or a jet cannot touch each other in the air, really. You know, they might do. Like the blue angels, they might do tricks, you know, like the um the jets and shit like that. 
But the angels, their chariots can pass through each other. They're small, huge. It doesn't matter. All right. It says, uh, with shaking of shields and multitude of pikes and drawing of swords and casting of darts and glittering of golden ornaments. See, that what she saw. She saw a glittering of golden ornaments and harness of all sorts. Wherefore, every man prayed that that, that that apparition might turn to good, meaning these were angels. The angels move in the, in the spiritual realm. So they were showing, showing themselves to Antiochus. The same way this lady saw the angels around that death site or crash site. All right. This is Psalms 34 and 7. The angel of Yahweh and campeth around about them that fear him and delivereth them. All right. So the angel is talking about who? Yahweh Shai and whatever other angel he sends. And the angels encamp around them that fear Yahweh, just like Uriel was sent around uh, Ezra. Gabriel was sent around uh, uh, Daniel. Raphael was sent around Tobit, right? And Tobias. And so on and so on. Just like today when we're out here teaching, we're just like Elisha. And, um, and he said, what? Fear none of their faces when you're teaching because the angels of the Lord encampeth around you. Them that fear him, man. All right? It's the same way it was around that mountain. You know? So, hey, it's possible the Most High did open this woman's eyes to see the angels. And um, if she did, um, they could have been for her demise or for her uh, uh, faith, which you never know, you know what I mean? But the angels bring about um, anybody dies on this earth and crash, all these different things that happen. The Most High writes the story, the angels play it out. You know, so she could have saw the angels uh, um, in the midst of that crash site and saw their armor. She said it was gold, and there's gold out in the heavens. And they're wearing gold, you know. All right, I'm going to end it with this one, because the angels are everywhere. All right, and Yahweh Shai, um, he's not just sitting in the heavens talking about what it means by that, and sitting on the right hand of the Father, meaning uh, he's reached the highest level of power, all right, back, back in his position, original position. And he's in the spirit realm, you know. So um, <clears throat> Joshua 5 and 13. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. All right. And me personally, I believe this was Yahweh Shai uh, only because um any other angels in the Bible that met uh, any men or Israelites, if you bow down to the angel, the angel will tell you to get up, you know, or they will say their name, like Gabriel, you know. Or if you try to bow down to them, they say, no, I'm, I am your brother that have the fellow same testimony as you. I came to do the will of the Father. But this angel told Joseph to go even further instead of just bowing down, he told him to take his shoes off after Joseph, Joshua was like it. All right, um, let me just read it. Uh, he lifted up his eyes, verse 13, and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. That had to be a mighty sword, man. A right, spiritual sword. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Are thou for us or for our adversaries? So he was like, Yo, are you with us or are you with them? He was intimidating. And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of Yahweh am I now come. And the captain of the host, if you read in Ezekiel chapter 1, it speaks about the captain. And that's talking about Yahweh Shah. All right, or Melchizedek. However you look at it. And, uh, Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship. And if it was if it was just a, 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 a another angel, they would have told Joshua to get up 
because worship is given to Yahweh and Yahweh Shah. And said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? <laughs> so they're calling him Lord. And the captain of Yahweh's host said, of Yahweh's army, the captain of his army is talking about Yahweh Shah, said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. So he had angels encamped around him, man. All right. So I'm going to end it with there, man. It's, hey, it's possible the lady, the FBI agent, probably did see angels um, in armor. But the important, important uh, message to get from that would be that they're around us, the believers. They encampeth around them that fear Yahweh. You know, and, and to protect us according to Psalm 91 and to guide us. So with that, I'm going to say uh, Shalom. Stay strong.